So these are all uh, Legion Post colors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at all these Legions. Yeah. VFWs too? VFW, Legion Post. Yeah. Wow, look at this. <laughs> all the Post colors are here, all around the area. So you, your name again? Dan Martin, from Birchwood. I'm Jim Young, a Veterans Officer for uh, Vernon County. I'm also the National President of the County Veterans Service Officers Association. And uh, the moving wall is uh, a moving tribute to Vietnam veterans, those that uh, have departed. And every time it comes to an area, we want to go out of our way to be sure it is given the reverence it deserves because it's not every day we get this privilege to pay our respects to our fallen comrades. And this is long overdue, 40 plus years, and it's just an absolute thrill for me to be here to participate in this event. Thank you very much. America
God bless the Vietnam veterans. And God bless the men and women who are fighting for the United States of America today. over the years and a great inspiration to all Americans. So please join me in welcoming the president of the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers, Mr. James P. Young. Thank you very much for that introduction and I am absolutely honored to be in your presence this evening and on behalf of 3,250 of my colleagues in 35 states, it is an absolute privilege to be here on their behalf in this ceremony this evening. The Moving Wall, so named because we're playing with words. The Moving Wall, yes, is mobile so it can travel from town to town, but also it evokes emotion. It's the wall that moves the heart. That's why we're playing with those words. In the American History Museum at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., there is a room of Vietnam Remembrance. It contains several walls of display cases from floor to ceiling, each containing items that have been left at the wall over the years by those who remember. I encourage anyone who happens to get the privilege to travel to Washington to go by the Smithsonian and see both the wall and the Remembrance Room that's on display. There are tens of thousands of items. There are many that aren't displayed. As such, they rotate the items quarterly. Ribbons, medals, old hats, pairs of boots, photographs, and lockets, flowers and postcards, just about everything imaginable and more than a few things that you would never associate with someone that has felt pain. But at one time or another, they have all been left at the wall by someone who lost a loved one and who is grieving. The National Park Services collect those items daily and preserve them. Today, this weekend, is a day and a weekend of remembrance. I hope that all will take the time to reflect and remember. I hope that we all will take the time to consider the one simple phrase that is etched on the Korean War Memorial in Washington, D.C. Freedom is not free. Someone paid the price. Please honor them with reverence and memory. And let's never forget the blood price paid for the freedom we so cherish. Thank you. Intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Specialist Fourth Class Wetzel was serving as door gunner aboard a helicopter which was part of an insertion force trapped in a landing zone by intense and deadly hostile fire. 
He was going to the aid of his aircraft commander when he was blown into a rice paddy and critically wounded by two enemy rockets that exploded just inches from his location. Although bleeding profusely due to the loss of his left arm and severe wounds in his right arm, chest, and left leg, Specialist 4th Class Wessel staggered back to his original position in his gun well and took the enemy forces under fire. His machine gun was the only weapon placing effective fire on the enemy at the time. Through a resolve that overcame the shock and intolerable pain of his injuries, Specialist 4th Class Wetzel remained at his position until he had eliminated the automatic weapons emplacement that had been inflicting heavy casualties on the American troops and preventing them from moving against the strong enemy force. And refusing to attend to his own extensive wounds, he attempted to return to the aid of his aircraft commander, but passed out from loss of blood. Regaining consciousness, then, he persisted in his efforts to drag himself to the aid of his fellow crewmen. After an agonizing effort, he came to the side of the crew chief who was attempting to drag the wounded aircraft commander to the safety of a nearby dike. Unswerving in his devotion to his fellow men, Specialist 4th Class Wetzel assisted his crew chief even though he lost consciousness once again during this action. Specialist 4th Class Wetzel displayed extraordinary heroism in his efforts to aid his fellow crewmen. His gallant actions were in keeping with the highest traditions of the U.S. Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of his country. So ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker for this evening, the Medal of Honor recipient, Specialist 4th Class Gary George Wetzel. Talked about what happened a long, long time ago. And it, it still brings back memories, and I guess when all of us get in situations, we have two ways to go, either snuff it on the side or, or make, make the best of it. And I just, uh, I try to do the best that I could. I stand before you, and I'm very, very honored to wear this blue ribbon around my neck. But, when I was in the hospital in Japan, I had a bunch of operations. And, uh, looked like a piece of chopped liver, but some of the guys that I had saved were recuperating from their wounds, and they would come up to my bunk and ask if I'm so-and-so, and I'd say, yeah, and then they would pull out their wallet and show me a picture of their wife or their kids or their girlfriend and say, hey, man, this is what I got to go back to, and I guess that's what it's all about. So I, I not only wear this for me, I, I wear it for us. But behind me we have this wall with over 58,000 names. And we, we, we talk about it being a living wall, because I'm sure everybody here knows of somebody that's on the wall, and. We, we look at that name and we can equate it with a face and saying he was good or she was good. And yes, there's eight women also on that wall. Um, there's three sets of father and sons on that wall. The first known casualty was Richard B. Fitzgibbon of North Weymouth, Massachusetts, as according to the Department of Defense. And then on September 7, 65, his son was killed. The sacrifices of the men and women that have given us to be here today. And there's so much we take for granted. When you walk in your house, you turn a switch on, or you got hot and cold running water. But there's a price for that. We look at all these young people that are serving our nation now and the gratitude that we show to them that yes, we as citizens truly care for what you are doing. Is it right or wrong? They, they, they took an oath to serve this country and we should support that because that's what the word freedom is all about. For letting me take time out to share part of your evening. God bless you.
from Polk County, Private First Class Gary A. Isaacson, Corporal Kent L. Johnstone, Sergeant First Class Dale R. Karpensky, Specialist Fourth Class Jean S. Swagger. From Washburn County, Dispersing Clerk Second Class John M. Bronkema, Specialist Fourth Class Greg M. Goslin. Rusk County, Private Richard R. Serra, Private First Class Thomas R. Zayner, Specialist.